Hi, floppy catters. This is my parent's 16 year old cat, Camus. So I'm laughing a little bit because he wasn't expecting me to start talking like that all of a sudden. Sorry, baby. So Camus is in later stages of renal disease and he gets ozone therapy at home now. And I wanted to show you guys how I do that. So let's get started. So welcome to my parents' garage. This is the home kit that I got from O3 Vets. It's called the Hummingbird. And I have more in here than what normally comes with it because it's just a great carrying case to get everything. But so I have the paperwork and stuff. But this is all I use for the rectal ozone, which Camus is going to get today. The nice thing about O3 Vets is that you can call them, you can email them and ask them exactly what you need to order based on what your vet has recommended. So if your vet doesn't necessarily help you know what to order ozone wise or then you can just call it with three vets. So that's what I did. And they were very kind to me and we had lots of conversations. So they, they'll send you a pack of catheters. This is a 10 pack of catheters. I don't want to pull them out because you can use one for several months. So this is the one that we use on Camus that I clean daily. Then they send you syringes and you can add, you know, whatever you need. I also got stuff for ozonated saline. So that's all in there as well. Of course, anything that you're gonna do to your cat ozone wise, you absolutely wanna follow your vet's recommendations. Not some girl on YouTube that's doing an instructional video about how she does it on her cats because I'm doing it based on my vet's recommendations. So first you're going to plug in the generator and let it run for a minute. So we'll just turn it on. It says that ozone is running there, but without the oxygen hooked up to it, there's no ozone pe being produced. And although it's okay to create rectal insulation in, I can't say the word, but where you're going to, you know, push it into your kitty, it's okay to create it inside. I'm doing it out in the garage because this is my parents' home and I just would prefer to be extra careful. All right, after it's run for a while, about a minute, then I plug in the tubing. And actually, O3 Vets told me that I don't need to always, you know, take the tubing off and you can leave it all connected if you want, if you have a place where you can do that. I can't leave it all connected at my parents' house, so I unconnect everything. Then I'm gonna move to the oxygen tank. Now this is a medical grade oxygen tank. It took me forever to find someone that would give me one for a prescription that was written for a cat. Once I found it though, it was super cheap. It was $15 and I can have it for as long as I need it for that $15. Then they also send you a regulator and it's important that you have their regulator because the one that I got from med resources where I got this tank, is for adults and this is a pediatric regulator so the flow of oxygen is even less and for rectal ozone it's suggested that you ins i can't say the word insulate at 30 at least 35 so we'll do one fourth today so we're going to set the regulator at one fourth to create that ozone concentration so I'm gonna turn on the oxygen tank and you can tell it's on because, whoops, it shows you how much oxygen is left in the tank. And then I'm going to dial it to one fourth because that's our goal to insulate at that level. When you buy all of the supplies that you need from O3 Vets and they're really helpful. I mean, I literally called them and said, okay, I need to do rectal ozone and I need to do ozonated saline. Tell me everything I need to buy to you know, be set up for success. So they sent me a couple of these ozone syringes and ozone syringes will last a long, long time, longer than a regular syringe is going to last because they're set up for ozone. And they have this like lure lock connection here that where they connect on the generator as well, where you just twist it on. So the oxygen has been running for a little bit to the generator. So now we can turn on the ozone and then slowly this syringe will fill up with the ozonated gas that is created from the generator. All 
All right, once it's filled to your desired amount, like actually Camus gets about 30. So we'll press that to 40. And then I will give him about 35 and just not go all the way to the end. Once the ozone is in the tube, then you connect it to the catheter that we're going to put in Camus. This is a catheter that we've used over and over again. So I have it wrapped in a paper towel because I, that's what I do after I clean it, which you'll see at the end of this video. The other thing is, is ozone is heavier than the air that we breathe, so it's okay to be in there, but you need to use this within 30 minutes of making it. So just make sure that you do that. And you can either break this down straight away or you can go give this to your cat and then come back and you know disassemble everything or keep it connected depending on you know where you're going to store it. Lubricating jelly is necessary so you could use KY but I just got the CVS brand for it. And as my vet told me, you know, the the rectum isn't the cleanest place and so you don't really need to worry about it being super clean. But I probably put like like a little bubble size amount. That's really accurate measurement there. Um, and then she only put it, when I watched her do it, she only puts it really on the tip, but I like to lube the whole thing. Then we go find his bottom hole. Where is it? So that's it. So cats have two sphincters and he'll let me get through one. And you see how his legs moved right away. Camus is an incredible patient. So don't judge what your cat will do based on Camus. Camus lets you do most anything to him. The reason my mom is here petting him is because they have two sphincters. He'll let me in the first one, but not until he's relaxed will he let me in the second one. So we kind of have to like wait a minute where he kind of forgets, like, you know, gets calm from my mom touching him. My mom is his his owner. So that's the best person to obviously do it. And then I just try to push it in to see if he'll let me go. And usually, and, and I kind of want to get it up two and a half to three inches. So that little mark I've made myself with a Sharpie. He's not letting me in. Something that I wish I would have understood when they, so see how Camus is getting uncomfortable. I've had a col half colonoscopy when I was awake and it's a very uncomfortable feeling. So the fact that he's moving his paws tells me that he's, it's in where it needs to be. So once it's in, so then I'm gonna hold it in there and then slowly squeeze the ozone gas into it. I don't know the rate in which you do this, but I just, Try to go slowly. Okay, so on the catheter, I have marked three inches up. And the reason why is you're trying to target the portal vein in their rectum or anus. I don't know what it's called. I'm not a medical professional. So in a, in a dog, I think I was told by a 3 vets that it's about three inches up the rectum in a cat. You don't really have to go up that far, but I just have that marker so that I know that it's, you know, if basically all, only this is sticking out of Camus, then I've gotten to that portal vein, which is where you're trying to get in order to get the ozone inside of him. You're all done with the catheter and you pull it out of Cam your kitty. Then you can either put his tail down or you can put it between his legs. And that, you just hold that for 30 seconds to keep the ozone inside of his rectum and let it absorb basically. And then once that 30 seconds is done, you can release his tail and then release him as well. We hold him for a little bit and you can see that he's a very, very good patient. And then what happens after this basically is that Camus will go and he'll try to poop because his rectum has been stimulated. Not, I've been told by the vet that does his ozone that not all cats or dogs go and poop but Camus definitely does and it can feel kind of like a rush like a diarrhea type for him so he doesn't always go to the litter box so definitely watch your cat if you're doing it at home for the first time where they go um, I've had to 
get them off of a couch a couple times or a chair so that we go back to the litter box. Whenever Camus is done with the treatment, I always pick him up and tell him he was a good boy. Um, and then tell him that we're all dead, we're all dead. I really think that this is an important step in the process. If it's not me, my mom will do it so that, you know, it's not a terrifying thing every time he's put on this table. And now he's gonna go <laughs> get on my shoes because he likes my shoes a ton. You can reuse the catheter, but obviously in order to do that, you want to clean it so that you can reuse it in a semi-sterile, I wouldn't say sterile, but so I run warm water through it to kind of clean it off and then I'll like, if there's anything, any fecal matter, then I'll just under the warm water, I'll get that off. Then I take a little bit of hydrogen peroxide, put it in a bowl, maybe like two syringes full so that I can easily syringe it out. I was trying to show you how to syringe it, but it's, I couldn't do it at that angle. This is a three milliliter syringe and I shoot it through the catheter a couple of times so that it's clean on the inside so that tomorrow when we do this, cause we're giving rectal ozone daily, it will be all clean for Camus. And then I run warm water again through the catheter, wipe it down on the side. I take another syringe, fill it with air so that the water on the inside gets out of the catheter. And I detach the syringe from the catheter when I fill it with air so that water doesn't get in the syringe. That's pr pretty decently cleaned out. And then I just wrap it up and get it ready for tomorrow's use. After everything is done, then you want to turn off your oxygen tank and then I actually go ahead, I call it draining the tank because I don't really know what else it would be called because I don't work in oxygen supply, but I let the, the dial run out to refill so then I know and then put the dial back to zero so that I, I know that it's completely closed off and all the oxygen is out or whatever. So I wrap that tubing around there. That's what I do. Again, you can keep the tubing attached to the generator. Just depends on what your situation is at your house. Then I take off the power cord and put my little generator back into the hummingbird kit. Keep it all safe and protected. And that is it. You might be wondering why I'm even doing this. I didn't explain that. Before we brought Camus in for his first ozone treatment, he was listless. He didn't want to get up off the ground. And this video here that you're watching was taken of Camus probably a month after having ozone on a regular basis. He started eating more on his own because of ozone. And he even started playing with his banana again. Now, obviously he's in renal failure, so the progression is going to happen, but it was nice after being completely listless and having no energy at all that he started cleaning himself again, started playing with his banana, started bunny kicking my flip-flops as you saw earlier on in the clip. There were just lots of great things that quality of life things that happened because of ozone. So that is why we have continued to do ozone with Camus and that's why I wanted to make this video because I had no idea what I was doing when I got into it because we started doing it at home so that we didn't have to drag him out to the vet um, two times a week. And if somebody had done a video like this before I got started, I would have really appreciated it. And that's why I wanted to put this video together and also just show you like how well he's done um, because of it. If you have a renal failure cat and you can't get it at home, at least you can have it done at your vet's office near you, hopefully. I'll include a link in the about section below to where you can buy a hummingbird generator like the one that I used here on O3 Vets. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I can always reach out to O3 Vets on your behalf. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.